<laughs> What's going on, good people? Welcome back to another episode of the Bison Training Show. Coming at you live from the Bison Training Lab. Welcome back to the week of June 15, 2021. We are here today to get things rolling. We want to break down these markets this week and show you exactly what levels you need to trade from, what pairs are doing what, and what moves are there to be had. If you don't know, I'm half of the Bison Trading Show crew. I go by the name of Ty Trades Futures. And of course, I'm here with my guy. You already know the one and only. I'm the D guy, aka Pro Financial. Man, I hope you guys are ready for another new week of new money, new opportunities. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right on in and do a recap of last week. So let's see how the market is going to play, how it how it actually finished playing out last week, and what we can look forward to this week. So let's just jump right on in. All right. So with that being said, man, I want to kick off this week with some, some currency analysis. Let's go ahead and drop over into the dollar Swiss market, and let's see what's been going on lately. Uh, I don't think we had a chance to cover this last Friday. So we'll have a lot to talk about today. So since it's the beginning of the week, you guys already know that I like to start at the the weekly chart because we like to do a thing called top-down analysis where you figure out the longer-term picture on the higher time frames and then you break it down piece by piece by piece until you end up on whatever chart you like to trade. For me, that's the one minute and the five, so I break it all the way down. So as we can see from the weekly chart, man, Going back, we've been in a consistent downtrend for the past two years since March of 2019. So really for a year and almost a quarter, two years and a quarter almost. So that gives you an overall picture for what the overall trend is long term. And as we can see, we zoom in, we see that we had the most recent uh, leg of the downtrend that started March 22nd this year. And so far, we're still within that down leg. So that kind of sets the picture for what we're looking at in terms of the daily chart. The bias is definitely to the short side. We're looking for those levels. And if we pick back up on where we left off from last week, we were telling you guys the prices that we wanted you to look at for the short trade. We said somewhere in the 89.80s, you want to be aggressive. 89.90 is like that nice mid-range. And then I said the order I'm looking for is 90.10. And on Friday, prices were actually able to make their way up to that level. So let's take a look at exactly how that happened and what you should be looking for going forward in the future. So we had prices shoot back up on June 10th. I think that was on Thursday, right? So they came all the way back up here to the 90. They fell back during the morning, but on Friday, they popped all the way up to 89 at first and then eventually to uh, 90.8 today. So it didn't quite hit 90.10, but I've, go, I've always told you guys about that close enough rule where sometimes the market doesn't come exactly to your price, but if it's a few pips away, it's, in my opinion, close enough and you take the trade. So this is one of those occasions where that rule definitely came into play. Now, we can also see that 90.10, the reason I pointed it out to you guys was because it lined up with previous structure. From June 7th over here, we see that top, these couple of weeks sticking out right here. Notice how prices came all the way back up to structure. They tested it, and from that point forward, we've fallen by more than 25 points. I mean, 25 pips. So we know that these structural levels can hold up. So if you're in the market and you're looking for these quick scalps, pay attention to these levels that we're giving you because they can definitely work. Now, if you're going forward in the future, if you're short right now, man... I would say if you haven't taken profits, maybe you should do so because it looks like prices are on their way back up to test this level again before they make their move back down. Now, I remind you guys, the overall trend long term is still down, so we always want to lean more towards the short side. But also, let's notice that if we go back up to the daily. Now, before I say this, in no way, shape, or form am I saying that the market is a buy right now, but we can kind of see the market forming a base, a bottom or consolidations on whatever you want to call it. If we look at what prices have done since May 25th, notice how this whole time they were been, they've been trending down, downwards, downwards, consistently, lower lows and lower highs. But when we get down to these levels, also notice that if we follow them over, they line up with what used to be previous resistance, so it makes sense that it's now support. These levels have held up. Notice how prices are moving sideways a little bit. 
last time we saw that type of price action coming out of a major down move was right here at the beginning of the year where we start seeing that sideways motion. Market made a bottom. It had a bullish reversal pattern and then it moved. So that's a potential setup for what we're looking at right now. So keep that in mind. It's not here quite yet, but the buyers could definitely step in. And if we're looking at the hourly chart, I would say the best level to short is still 90-10. But be aware that the bulls could step in over the short term and push this market higher, maybe all the way back up here to 90-50. Because notice what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this tweet, uh, this B pattern reversal followed by a double bottom, right? It's not perfect, but you look at this, you look at that on the hourly chart, that's a double bottom. We moved higher. If you look at the lowest point, this right here, is a higher low in comparison to where we came from before and from the first one that we made. So we can see that uh, kind of playing out. Now, that doesn't mean that this market is going to go higher forever, but it could definitely come back. It should give enough uh, momentum to come back up, retest resistance. Because like D says, for every good short move, you need a good down move. Say what, D? I don't think they heard you. For every <clears throat> for every good short move, we need a good buy, a good up move. That's right. So you that's know. what we're looking for right now. We're it's kind of setting up a little bit. We're in a position where if you're not already in the market, you really just gotta wait. I would say in terms of the shorts, we break back down below 89.75. We're definitely moving back down the structure at 89.30. So that's my play for this week. I'm aiming for that 89.30 level. We're about 50 points away from that. So we could definitely catch some good moves this week. So let's keep our eyes on Dollar Swiss. And also, let's keep our eyes on D because he's about to give us a nice little breakdown for Dollar Swiss, too. All right. So definitely take away the volume. And <clears throat> we got to definitely really pay attention because I know a lot of the levels that we mentioned last week did hit and did play out so let's just kind of do 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 exactly what tiberius did greatly which was the top down analysis we never ever want to skip this step this is very important everything is everything as far as making lower lows and lower highs you know i pay attention more to the moving averages those moving averages to me are are important and where they cross and sometimes where they sit the market comes right up hits it and either respects it or blow passes it and goes up so as we can see here once we made that high at 90 50 in the beginning of 2021 that's pretty much our kind of focus for right now because that is letting us know ever since that time We've been making lower lows and lower highs. And this actually broke over both of the moving averages. But where they cross, I want that. What's, what price is that at they cross? The 90.10, right? At the 90.10. And that was a level that Tiberius mentioned in his analysis. So we're going to go ahead and drop down to the daily. Or that's the 91. Is that, is that the 90.10? Yeah, no, that's, nine, that's not 90.10. Yeah, that's 91. 9101. Oh, I thought that was 9010. Okay, but 90, 9101. I'm going to write that one down. 9101. So let's drop down to the daily. So we have the market coming down. The market crossed, both, crossed over both of the moving averages. The market came up. Had con Yes, yeah, so we came all the way down. By the 17th, we made a high at 90. At 90, it found resistance, that nice little double top, and the market made its way down. At that level, when it came back down, it has a double top. Just like Tiberius said, at that double bottom, when you follow it all the way over to the left, it aligns with the area that was once a previous high before this market made its big up move. So that is a very, very important level, that double bottom. That double bottom is an area that we need to pay attention to because if that level gets broken, we can definitely expect the market to come back all the way down, possibly somewhere towards 88. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Our overall direction we're looking for are, is short moves. And just like Tiberius said, for every good 
uh, sell move, we need a buy move. So we can definitely expect to make money on both sides of the market. You just have to find out which direction you want to make your money on. Be patient and let it come to you. So for me, like I said, I'm going to be looking for some shorts. Tiberius said some very good levels, which was the 89.90, the 90.10, and even the 90.08, where the market didn't come all the way up to 90.10. It had that just good enough. So let's drop down to the four hour. And I actually want to pull up a Fibonacci. So go into where that red wick is at. Yeah, down there. And just go to the high. And drag it over. I want to see where it looks like there. So at this particular level, um, it's sitting exactly on the 61. And I think, like I told you in previous streams that the big banks and the people who move the markets they like to have their entries somewhere in the 61 and 78 area so that anywhere between that area can possibly be a good entry to hop in for a long because i feel like you can really make money on both sides i just think right now we're pretty much looking for the overall trend is a short so we're pretty much looking for the market to come back into higher prices so we can execute that short so i think right now for 9.57, I think a buy could possibly be in play so we can get that set up for a short. But now I want to move where you now put that uh, where you started it. Now I want you to move that over to that red wick right closer to the 14th. And I want the high to be at the top of it at 90. Let me see what that looks like. Yep, so bring that down to 90. Over, 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 up. Oh, no, actually right there, right there. Let me see what it looks like right here. From here to the top at 90. And move it over just a little bit. Just one zero probably. All right, so. Drop down to the two hour. So I think I think maybe that low where you started at 1300 is maybe too low. I want you to bring that 1300 up to 8970. To that red wick, yep. Just want to see where what it looks like. Bring it up to the high at 90. The high? Yeah, at 90. Yeah. And now drop to the 30 minute. So I think this where where we have it now can probably give more of a better picture and I feel like anywhere between the 61 and 78 would definitely be a, a good area to hop in for a buy but I just feel like maybe the 78 is is maybe a little too low just because ever since we hit that second double bottom we just been making up moves from there so I just feel like maybe we can get that nice entry off of the 61 at 8980 Write that one down, 89.80. So I think if we can get the prices to come back down to that 89.80, I think that would be also a good area um, for the buy. And like I said, we're just only trying to take it up to higher prices so we can set in for the overall trend, which is short to take the market down lower. So I think we can possibly get maybe 30 pips out of this. So actually put a measuring, see how many pips it is from the 61 up to the 90 or just to the red line. That is only, you know, less than 20 pips. 
So, you know, that possibly could not even be, that is up to you as a trader to decide, with, is that 14 pips worth getting, to, jumping into, or is it best for to wait to prices to come back up into these higher prices, um, up at the 89 and the 90 to hop in for the short. So actually, I want you to also put a nice little uh, zone. Um, <clears throat> this red, the red top over here, I just want it to be just the wick. No, oh, that might be a little too little. So where these double tops is, the green one and the red one, at 12, over at 12 o'clock, the double top at a 90. So slide it all the way over. Over one more time. Right there. I guess maybe just put like a zone over those two and just slide it over. And I just wanted to see what it looks like. And I think that may be even too small. I should probably use the double top on the second one and just use that entire body, including the wick. That probably might be a little bit more reasonable. Yep, use that whole entire candle and wick. Yeah, I would bring it down to the whole candle. Just because the way that green wick uh, candle is set up, it has such a long wick and a tiny body. And it's a neutral candle and it's stupid. So I feel like that candle is the reason why a lot of that area you can hop in for a short. So I think this area right here that maybe I aligned is a good area to think about for prices to come into. If it rejects at this level, then we can definitely expect to hop in for the short. So that's exactly circling around 90. So I guess, you know, the... The entry, so so this is what I'm going to say. For buyers, the prices you're looking for is 89.80. I don't know if it would be worth taking 14 or 15 pips. It's up to you. Maybe if your lot size is much bigger, you can capitalize. But for us sellers, which we're following that the direction of the market, we're waiting for prices to come somewhere into that 90 area where the zone is aligned. And we're just going to take it back down and see where it goes. So that's my analysis. So that right there, that's US, USD, CHF, better known as Dollar Swiss. We'll be tapping in on that throughout the week, giving you guys some updates to see how things are going, see how you guys are trading it, let you know how we're trading it. And that brings us to the next pair that we have on tap for tonight, the good old Dow Jones, a.k.a. the US 30. So let's go ahead and get into this one right here. Since it's the beginning of the week, we want to do the same thing that we did with Dollar Swiss. We want to start from a top-down perspective and really analyze the longer-term, bigger-term picture. So what we can see so far as we fit the whole chart into the screen is that since March of 2020, this thing has been on a tear. If we just measure it, I can't even remember the last time we measured, but let's just do it for the sake of doing it. 91% in about a year's time now the dow jones usually doesn't give returns like that on a normal basis so we know that we're definitely in some very special times and we need as traders to take advantage of everything that we can so looking at the long-term perspective what do we see we see that prices are kind of stalling out a bit at the all-time high that we made recently at the beginning of may the all-time high was thirty-five thousand one hundred and two. so Ever since we hit that point, we just kind of been hovering at the bodies. As a matter of fact, the wick for that candle was 102, but the close was actually more so around 34,432. So that's kind of where we've been hovering. That's our supply level, our resistance zone. So 430, I want y'all to remember that 34,430. That's going to be very important. We break above those prices. We're definitely having a bull run to the upside. So keep that in mind, too. Now, on the weekly chart, it's kind of hard to see what we're doing right now. But we can kind of get a good pick. We can, not good, but decent. When you're in an uptrend, you want to identify the last lows that you're looking at. We 
because when a market moves in an uptrend, it makes higher highs and higher lows. Those higher lows have a high tendency to come back and test what used to be previous levels of resistance that now turn into support. So that's why this level that I'm highlighting here at 34,000, let's call it 200, is so important. Because if we follow this to the right, we follow the crosshairs across, notice that the body for this long tail candle wick, it closed on top of that level. This candle opened on top of that level. And this candle that came down retested that same level, wicked off of it, and couldn't close below it. So that's telling us that this whole level is still holding up. And remind you guys, this is the same area that I was telling you guys about for weeks when I talk about that double, I mean that double top, when we go back down to the four hour and the hourly chart. So I'll show that to you guys once again to let you know that on the weekly, on the hourly, on the daily, that level is very important every time. And as we can see on the daily right now, we're still hovering above those levels. So this is our area right here. Very important. This right here is acting as support. And think about it, y'all. If you look at the chart and you see what happened the last time the prices came back down to the 50 moving average, it started the next leg of the uptrend. So off of that touch of the 50, the market moved up by 1,200 points. So we know that that 50 is very strong, especially in an uptrend. And where are we coming back to right now? We're coming back to that 50 period moving average. Not only that, we follow it over to the left. It lines up with our 34,200 level, which we know is important on both the weekly, daily, and every time frame below that. So everything is kind of lining up right now for us to see a very nice bull run. And one thing I also want to point out to you guys, I want to talk about correlation. I don't know if you guys remember, it was a while back, but I think in April, we did this episode right here with Merch Supreme talking about why understanding market correlation is so important. So we can kind of refer back to that lesson for what we're going over today, because I want to talk to you guys about the correlation between the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. Now, I'll just tell you about it really briefly. The S&P and the Dow Jones are two other three indexes. The other one is the NASDAQ. And these indexes or indices uh, give a good picture of the stock market. And they usually move in unison. So if you see one market making high, another market, the NAS, so if the, let me get, let me, so if the S&P is making all-time high, the NASDAQ should be doing the same and the Dow Jones should also be doing the same. Now, what I want to point out to you guys, once we go back to the daily chart, is that the Dow Jones, if we look at it, has been in a, a slight pullback ever since we made that all-time high. Now, what I want to do, I want to flash over to the S&P 500 futures to show you the difference in these charts. So look here. This is the S&P. Notice how on the S&P, when we get to this same area, instead of moving down, we're actually moving up, and we actually made an all-time high today. So the S&P made an all-time high today, right? Now let's look at the NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ 100 broke out to new all-time highs today as well. All these markets are making new all-time highs. But then we pull back up to US 30. And what do we have? US 30 is lagging behind all of the other indexes. US 30 is moving lower, bouncing off a of major support. So that usually means one, one of two things. Either the NASDAQ and the S&P are going to fall back and catch up with the Dow Jones on the downside, or the Dow Jones is going to push up and catch up with the S&P and the NASDAQ 500. So that's another catalyst that could help you kind of wrap your head around where you want to get in and give you more confidence going along. Now, of course, just because we know that that relationship exists doesn't mean that we trade it automatically. We still want to look at the chart and use it as our end-all, be-all. And right now, if we're looking at price action, it's nothing really here that can tell us that it's time to buy quite yet. Because as we look at this chart, we can notice from June 7th that at this top we made at 34,800 that we moved lower. We've been making lower lows and lower highs. We can clearly see that. So until we get higher highs and higher lows, which would be established if we broke above 34,350, 
until that level gets broken above, it's really not much we can do in terms of a long side. So we have a lot of good things setting up for our long plays, and we have to keep our eyes open because I believe that on one of these days or nights, the Dow Jones is just going to have a monster move that's going to allow it to catch back up to the same territory of all-time highs like the S&P and NASDAQ are achieving. So keep that in mind. These correlation plays are one of the safest things you can do in the market. It just really comes down to being patient and waiting for your time to strike. So let's keep that in mind. Anything above 34350 we should be looking for it along. Uh, structural major support is located at 34200 As long as we stay above that, the uptrend is intact. So let's look out for that correlation trade, and let's see if the Dow Jones can catch up to the S&P and the NASDAQ this week. I think it's a pretty good chance of it happening, so we'll see how that plays out. With that being said, let's pass it over to D, and let's get his analysis on US 30, a.k.a. the Dow Jones. All right, so quickly I'm going to go over some levels that were kind of talked about last week, um, which were, I know we said we need to stay above 34053 um, We were looking for price to come <clears throat> somewhere around 34051 34,300, 34,525, and 34,063. So let's kind of see where those levels kind of line up at. So like we do all the time when we look at a new pair is we start at the top down. So weekly, the 20 is above the 50, higher highs, higher lows, flash over to the monthly. We're looking for higher highs and 20 over the 50 to have that correlation um, going forward so but we can also notice that on the monthly we're starting to form that a red candle that could probably not mean much we're halfway through the month so that could either mean one or two things we could either be starting to set up for a retracement um, for some of the levels that we've broken for this high move to kind of retest those levels and then before we go back up or the market is just kind of going to stay in this area and then start making its way up. So let's strap flash back down to the weekly again. The 20 is above the 50. Correct. Higher highs, higher lows. But like we have that double that double wick. Um I said a double wick, a double bottom with that nice little tweezer bottom. And then actually that price, um, it's when you slide it over, it lines up with that red candle. And for some reason, I feel like that red candle in particular. Before all of this kind of consolidation moving to the side happened was a previous high level. And I think that's very important. I feel like that was a retracement candle as well. Um, it lines up exactly with the 20 moving average. So I think that could be very important. So I think that's 33.25. So let me get right that 33.25. But we are on the weekly. So... Um, no, 33. Go to th let me see what 3325 looks like. That's probably, is it much, much higher? No, nah, it's about right here. It is 3323. All right, so yeah, 3325. Because I always want to try to stay closer towards the quarter levels. Let's go, to have, go ahead and go down to the daily. And like, with, like I've always said, by the time we have gotten down to the daily, we should have an understanding of where we... Um, want to get in in the market whether it's long or short in this particular case we're going to be looking for long please um, so I really like that that 3325 level but <clears throat> that was on the weekly go to it here on the daily let me see where that's at 3325 now that's James right there yeah that joint is like kind of mad far away so we got to kind of trade what we see and not you know what we've Feel like it's gonna go and now that we drop down to the daily where we are right now actually kind of looks like it lines up with a, the next high that was once a high before any of that area was formed and that area is 34 can we get 34.25 out of that too yeah okay 34.25 So, like I said, I always want to try to stay closer to those quarter levels. So, 34.25 is another area I'm looking for to execute the market. So, let's drop down to the unhide your signals real quick. 
and it looks like you have that area highlighted perfectly and drop down to the two hour. Okay, straighten it up a little bit. So I feel like now that we've kind of bounced off and made like a nice little double top, we had a nice little shoot up green candle just recently at any time, or at least, I don't know if you guys noticed it a lot, but anytime that you see a huge green candle like that, that kind of somewhat signifies like a pole. And when I say a pole, it's like a, it's starting to form a flag formation and it's usually an up formation. But being that it kind of looks like it's still moving to the side, I think we're in a very, very, uh, strong resistance level kind of fit the market in a little bit more we'll go to the go to the four hour um bring up um the bollinger bands let me see what that gym look like so i want to see if it's squeezing where we are right now this could possibly be the level we can begin to see or to begin to set up for longer plays to go bring the market up higher. So it's not pretty much squeezing. It's kind of like set apart. But we did get a break out of the bottom of the Bollinger Bands. And one of the rules of the Bollinger Bands is if we get a break out lower, we should be expecting prices to start, you know, kind of making its way back up higher. So... I would um, unhide your signals again. So I think you might have a line at that. So right there at that red line, um, maybe if it was brought up just a little bit more, that would be pretty much an area I would be kind of looking for. So I would use as a as a little blueprint that little green wick where it's kind of sticking out at the bottom. I will put a zone. So I'll pretty much bring that zone that's already formed down just to that wick, and if prices kind of break out of that zone and retest it then we can kind of rule off the long for now but being that we got that stick out of the lower out of the Bollinger Band I would put a zone right there across and kind of see what it does moving forward so the price that is 34.25 so that is probably the area I'm going to look to go so drop down to a two hour now Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of uh, highlight the 34.25. And like I said, I don't usually like to stick on one particular price. So if you guys want to highlight that area, any prices with it, which would be in there, which would possibly be 34, 26, 30, like all the odd numbers will be in it. So I will highlight that area. And I like where he has that zone that's kind of formed too, because that's probably going to be the take profit area. Probably. I don't know. And the only reason why I said that is because we've been making lower lows and lower highs. But the overall trend is up. So we have to kind of just follow that. So for right now, my analysis is the 34.25. I'm looking forward to taking it back up to structure. Now nah, probably like thirty four, like thirty four eighty. Yeah. Yeah, maybe bring it down just a little bit. Yeah, somewhere up there. I'll just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, but I kind of feel some about that zone that you put up. How many pips was it at from thirty four twenty five to that purple zone? About two ten. 210. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I could, I'll be good with that. Yeah. All right. So that right there, that's a Dow Jones for you guys. Keep these prices in mind. Throughout the week, we should see some nice things going on. Um, today is Tuesday. We had a little bit of news come out today. We had, let's see, we had retail sales come out at 830. As we can see, that was definitely a red event. So that should be a catalyst that helps to push the markets this week. So we should be able to see some some type of moves being made. And also this week, breaking news alert, 
we have a rate statement from the FOMC. So they're coming out with a statement about the economy, whether they want to increase rates, decrease rate interest rates, or keep them the same. That always moves the market and is very important. So make sure you guys are tuned in, locked in tomorrow, Wednesday, June 16th at 2 o'clock p.m. Make sure that news announcement does not catch you off guard. And let's see. Anything else for the United States for the rest of the week? No. For all my other countries, y'all definitely have a lot of stuff. So make sure you refer to your calendar before you trade this week. Stay aware. Very important. So, yeah, man, that wraps it up for U.S. 30 and Dollar Swiss. Darren has a couple pairs he wants to go over tonight, too. So I'm going to go ahead, pass it over. Let's hear what he had. All right. So, for you guys know, I've been kind of falling in love with AU lately because it's just really been following some of the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Um, I call actually the, the trades that I've put out on Friday that we put out actually played out and that was really cool so let's just kind of like do a breakdown and I'll kind of go over a couple of trades that I or review some of the trades that I had on Friday and the levels that we talked about last week so like we said we always start top down analysis so we're pretty much only looking for two, pretty much two or three things when we're looking at these higher time frames, and that is where are your moving averages sitting, whether your 7 or 20 is sitting below or above your 50 or 65. In my case, is 7 and 65. My 7 is below the 65. We've really been kind of just going sideways for the last couple of months. No really clear-cut direction. The only direction that we kind of see is what we've been what we had previously in the months of last year. But ever since 21, we've just been kind of just moving to the side. Um, where we're also sitting at now is a double top area or higher areas where the market has been previously struggling. So that lets us know this is a very, very strong support level. Um, let's drop down to the weekly. In the weekly, doesn't really correlate much with the monthly but like i always said i feel like the monthly is the more like clear-cut direction on where the market is going so if the monthly say it's going down that's the direction is going down every other thing that's smaller than the monthly is only kind of letting us know whether the market is either going sideways which is just consolidation or it's just um retracing so if it's retracing, if it's going down, the retracement of a down move is up. And going up, a, consol a consolidation would be coming down. So um, the 7 is above the 65. So I feel like to me, that's still kind of letting me know that we're just sitting in that retest level. We had a big push up. It doesn't want to do anything. Um, it hasn't made any higher highs or higher lows. And I think we said like 10, 10 other times last stream that... If we don't get the break of these two highs over to the left, that's technically not a higher high, higher low. So until that is even happening, we are pretty much sitting in a sideways retracement level. So let's drop down to the daily. The daily is probably going to start showing us now that maybe the retracement is now finally over. But like I said, there's nothing really kind of letting us know that the up move is still continuing. These levels that's sitting above from the 78 up to the 80 is pretty much letting us know there is no strength in the market to come up there that we just pretty much stop at the 78. Whatever's sitting at the 78 is probably much stronger than what's sitting at the 80. Um, let's drop down to... So pretty much right now, I feel like the market is still consolidating. Um, me, I felt like, you know, we're now starting to head down to our original direction which is down and that the retracement is done some of the trades that I took last week was actually some short moves and let me see look at my trade thing so okay so AU so some of the levels that I had in mind so let me drop down to the two hours so I think it was 
7703. I think it was sitting somewhere around this level last week. What was last Friday's date? Which was the 11th. So yeah, on Friday, we were definitely sitting in these levels right here. Um, the levels that I really kind of fell in love with was the 77.75 and the 77.40, which were my two key levels that I hopped in last week. And, I, and it was actually really struggling for a while. I think I did finally get the short, but then when it came down here in the 77... Let's just say 20. No, it just hit nice little toe. But it was like right around here. It was struggling for a while. But the short move is really where I was kind of focusing on AU. And to me, I felt like once we once we never kind of really broken past this 78, which I already knew, like I said, those double bottoms over, I mean, those double tops to the left, those were not even closely being broken. So I knew automatically I was kind of looking for shorts. I was just kind of really focusing on some higher levels that the market had struggling with, which were these areas up here. And the way I'm going to play this market again moving forward is also trying to kind of find some higher levels the market struggled at previously so we can get that strong short move. But I want you guys to kind of see where we're kind of sitting at right now. We're sitting at lower levels. These are very, very strong supply zones. And these are the zones that the market, every time it comes into it, it just shoots up. Like, I, I think I put it, no, I didn't put a zone, but I put two green lines. And it literally been respecting these two green lines ever since this low down here. We did get a we did get a fake out right here. We possibly would have thought that it would have came down here and hit the zone. It did not. So if my take profit was there, I think because I, th I moved my take profit right up here, right here at this low. I just felt like this was a fake out anyway, so I wasn't paying attention to this at all. Um, I feel like where we are right now, we can definitely look for the market to shoot up to hit some higher levels to continue the short. But I think right now at 10.28, um, we probably need to kind of fall back on the short move right now because I think the market is kind of re trying to retrace to move up into higher levels. So I'm kind of thinking somewhere around the 65 moving average um, coming up to these levels here. We are going short. So anytime we're going short, we're kind of looking for the retest of previous lows. We're actually sitting exactly at that previous low. So where we're sitting right now could possibly be a good level. So, you know, I put, oh yeah, I don't even put, need to put a new one. So for me, I want to kind of be patient and see what the market does now that it's sitting in that zone. For some reason, I feel like just like it did over here, the last time it was in this area, it's probably going to shoot all the way possibly back up. So we can probably make this a little bit tighter. And if it breaks out of it, we kind of know. Let me just delete this away. If it breaks out of it, we kind of really know that the up move is kind of canceled. I mean, the down move is canceled and that it could possibly be making its way back up to all the way up here to higher prices. So ultimately, I think where we're sitting right now is important. So if it rejects where we are right now and can't break this level, I would agree of possibly taking it short. But I would be careful because the last time it kind of fell into these areas, they were false breakouts. So I feel like one or two things could happen that it finally has the momentum to come all the way down and try to hit the second zone or this fake out was just a move to let us know that the market is not going to come down to these levels 
and that now we can expect the market to come back up to these higher prices or these higher levels up here and then these are the probably golden areas where uh, short uh, excuse me sellers will want to hop in to bring the market lower so to conclude I feel like the overall trend is still down but I feel like since it's sitting in a strong supply zone, I want to be careful and not kind of get caught out in knowing that it's a supply zone and that the last time it came in that area, it shot all the way up. So I'm going to kind of, you know, keep my rules strict, which is um, if it breaks out of this red zone, I possibly need to move it up a little bit higher. If it moves out of this red zone, zone here then I need to probably hold off on the short if it finds rejection somewhere possibly at the top of this red line here then that can probably be the green light for us to um to start to begin to thinking about setting up for the short so that's pretty much my analysis um Todd give me some of your thoughts all right so for me when it comes to AU let's go to the daily chart what I noticed is that the range has still been holding up. Prices have, for the most part, been stuck between 76 cents and 77 cents. So 77 cents being the top, 76 being the bottom. And if we look at, excuse me, I mean 78 cents being the top, 77 cents being the bottom. So if we look at the prices that we're at right now, we're towards 76.94. That's where we're at right now. That's only about six pips below 77. So in my experience, I would typically say that this pair is still within that general range. So I'm being cautious. I'm looking out for any type of bullish activity because to me, that's going to indicate that people are trying to do what they've been doing every time prices have come down into the 77 level and that's push prices back higher. They used to come all the way back up to 78. But lately, they've just been coming back to 77.50, maybe 77.60. So what that's telling us is that the overall range is getting smaller, which means the range is shrinking. Now, what that means for traders is that you should expect a breakout move eventually. Because one thing about markets that move sideways, they're not just moving sideways with no purpose. They're moving sideways giving the sellers and buyers different clues to determine which way they want to push the market coming out of it, which leads to the bigger move once the consolidation period gets broken. So you have periods in the market where you consolidate, then you have trend. Consolidate, trend. So right now that we're in the consolidation period, we want to look out for those things that would support a trend breakout. And one of the things that I've seen is when you see the range start to shrink, which is what we're seeing. So right now we're at a pivotal point in the market. I think if we stay below 77 cents, we could definitely break past the structure level that we have at 76.50 and come back down to test that moving average. I think that could definitely be in the question if we can break. Well, if we stay below 77 right now, we're only six pips below. So to me, that's more of a push through, not a breakthrough. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But. If we break it down to the hourly chart, when we look at the actual price action, to me, it indicates short. So no matter how I feel about the consolidation zone and this being the bottom of the range, I still have to respect what I see on the chart. I won't believe in the range. I won't believe in prices coming back up towards the top of the range unless they break 77 and we see higher highs and higher lows. Those uh, two things right there were confirmed to me that yes, we are moving higher. But until then, I have to ride the wave that I see on the chart. I see lower lows and lower highs. So what I want to do is find the last low. The last low actually is where we're at right now. So it's lining up perfectly. So this makes this even more of a pivotal stage of the market. I think depending on how this area plays out, it'll determine how this pair will move for the rest of the week. So if we make higher highs and higher lows, we stay above 77. We could definitely see a move back up to either 77.30 or 77.50. But if we continue to make new lows, lower lows and lower highs from this area that we're located at right now, I think that we could see maybe the start of the next 
well, not the next, but maybe the start of a down leg for the AU pair. So a lot of different things at play right here, a lot of different factors coming into play. So we'll see how this plays out throughout the week. I think this pair could definitely be one of those intriguing ones that we keep our eyes on. For sure, for sure. So with that said, and I want to recap some of the areas that I did talk about last week, which was 77... 425 Okay 77425 77450 And the reason I'm saying that because I just want to kind of show you guys where we were before. So last week was the 77 425, 77 450. I even think 77 flat and 77, uh, excuse me, 78. 77 flats down here. which was a very, very important level. How many wick rejections on this one? And then 78. That was probably was take profit. So the area, let me write this down. Where's my pen? Where did this go? Okay. So for AU, let me hide this. Let's give some areas. So we're kind of looking for that. I'm probably convinced maybe seven. No. Seventy-six nine fifty. So yeah, so seventy-six nine fifty is a good good area. You guys can kind of look at. Um but like we said before, we have to one take notice that the overall trend is down. Um, we are in a strong supply zone as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much some things to kind of just keep in mind. So that's pretty much my kind of thing. I'm kind of just still staying on the short side, and then I'm just pretty much all in for the short. So we're going to just flash right on over to, I think it was UCAT, no, gold. Gold has really been kind of retesting some previous areas. So I think like I told you guys last recap on Friday that gold did make another all-time high at 2050, somewhere around there. And that where we're sitting at right now is the last all-time high area, which is kind of really not a coincidence. Um, this is probably a retest level to let us know that we're either going to continue all the way back up now or it's just going to be short. So let's just kind of trade what we see and not what we think. So for the monthly, the 7 is still above the 65 higher. From here, been making higher highs and higher lows, but since we've been made this high here we've been making lower lows and lower highs so it's kind of just you know letting us know one is is it in a retracement move move right now uh, excuse me not retracement a consolidation area right now or is the market kind of just you know just trying to find some momentum to find a breakout so the seven is above the 65 on the weekly as well Still, the that lower lows and lower highs has been really kind of sharp on this one. Um, so, I think with that green zone is really just our area in which we want to kind of keep our eyes on. It's still sitting in it. Hasn't really been making no moves. Um, we did get a nice little short. And with gold, being that gold is so volatile, even with just a small little, just the green zone alone is probably like 4%. 
83, 26 probably points or whatever, however this is calculated. So that's kind of like a big deal right there. So I think that since we're still been making lower lows and lower highs, we still kind of got to like, still kind of understand that the overall trend is up, but it's been making lower lows and lower highs. So I think for me, I would kind of just stay to the side on this one just because things are just not really lining up. And like I said, when my moving averages don't line up, I kind of stay to the side. So weekly, I mean, monthly, weekly, and daily, the seven aligns up all being up moves. But it's just I can't ignore the fact that we've been making lower lows and lower highs. We've never really broken past this green zone here, which was an area to me that was just above the previous all-time high of the market over to the left. So, and actually, we didn't even, even come into that zone. So, um, I would just really have to trade what I see, and it looks like what I see is a breakout of a wedge. It looks like I'm getting that retest on, the, on that downtrend line. And now I have to kind of like put a zone. Let me make some of these zones a little darker because I have so many. So I feel like maybe that if we're this, let me see me zoom in. Where the bottom of this red, see this wet, this wick right here. I feel like we're going to put a zone over that area. And I feel like if it breaks below this bottom of this wick it would line up breaking this downtrend line which is the wedge it just came out of which would void the fact that we got a break and a retest and that we're now we're coming back into the zone i mean the wedge or it's just going to hit the downtrend line exactly to the t and we're just now going to begin this will be a perfect area to begin to look for buy so I think all in all, I'm going to kind of just stay on the side of the buys for now. Um, just because we've been, we, we did have uh, that series of lower lows and lower highs, but we can't ignore the fact that the overall trend is up. So I'm going to be tight with my decision on whether when we come down and try to get this retest of this bottom of this green zone, slash the top of the downtrend line we can get that touch and rejection and can't break through this would be a nice little area begin to set up for a buy but i probably won't think about getting think about getting in until it breaks the top of this structure so until i get the break of this structure the complete close of that candle coming above that structure is probably when I'll begin to think about that buy, especially on gold, which is very high in volatility. So, um, Ty, what's some of your things or your thoughts that, you know, that strike you on gold? All right. So for gold, for me, when we talk about gold, what I notice is that we're making lower lows and lower highs on the daily chart. So that's pretty interesting to me because even with this big up move that we had since the last time that we, um, I think we made a double bottom on the daily chart and that started the next leg of the uptrend that we've been participating in for the past couple of months. So that was a pretty nice move and it ran its course. It did what it was supposed to do, higher highs and higher lows. The bulls had their time. If we look at where prices came back to, they came right back up to that upper upper level green zone that they've been having, like Darren said before, they've been having struggle, struggle, struggle breaking through for a long, long time. No matter what they tried to do, for some reason, they just haven't been able to break through those prices at around 1920. And if we notice, if we look at all of the highs that we've made since we've made that all time high at 2080. Every top since that point has been lower across the board. they just been moving lower, moving lower, and moving lower. So who am I to say that this will be the time that it breaks? I got to just listen to what the chart tells me. And I like the price action that we're seeing right now because we came back into that 
1920 level where we had supply and we had resistance before. And we had a huge sell-off. We had almost a V pattern sell off that took us back down below the moving average for the first time, the seven. And then that pushed us back up and we made a lower high. So not only did we break through the seven, but we broke through the seven by making a lower high. So I think that actually kind of signals that we could see more downside pressure in the future. Because usually when markets move lower, this is what they do. They come back up to a level that used to be previous supply. The buyers get exhausted. We see a lower high get put in. And then the market just rolls back over. If we look at all of the other occasions where this kind of happened, it didn't happen the same way that it did this time. You go back to the, I would say, the top between October and November from uh, 2020. We had more of just a straight drop. It hit that level and it was like, nah, we just going to get out of here. And then it was the same situation when it happened again at the beginning of the year. It was no playing around. It was just a straight drop like, hey, let's get out of here. And in this situation that we're in right now, we initially had that straight drop. We came right down through the moving average, but then we got the lower high. So even though it's not exactly the same I still think that we could draw some similarity between where we're at right now and what we've seen in the past. Enough so where we can say that, you know what, I would definitely lean towards the short side right now. In terms of my bigger picture, now let's break it down to the hourly because like we were looking at before when D was analyzing, we are coming into the bottom of a demand zone. And that's never a place that we want to short from. We never want to short from lower prices. So I would say if we were looking for the short, we would like to take this short from an area that used to be a previous level of support. So I would probably hone in on 1865 because not only is that the structural top for the section that we're at right now, but you follow it to the left. And it's also a last low from, I think, June the 4th. This so right we here? should be uh -uh, June the 4th June 4th. at 1860. Yeah, follow that across. Oh, yeah. So that last low is holding up. So I think if I was to take the short, I would wait for prices to come back either to that level at 1860 or maybe towards eight. Well, that's actually 1866. I will wait for 1850 ish, maybe 1855. If I could get prices around those levels and I see some type of bearish price action coming off of those numbers, I would look for my short trades right there. And probably just take it back down to the bottom of structure at 1845 and call it a day. All right. There you have it. So, mind you, where that short move Tiberius is trying to take it is ultimately that retest level. We or us buyers are looking for to hop in to just take the market back up to higher prices to ultimately uh, either break some of these higher levels where we struggled before. Or ultimately just, you know, fail and just go all the way to the down, uh, all the way to the bottom. But I really honestly feel that we're going to get that, you know, retest at this double bottom again. Kind of sort of like we previously done. It likes to do like a double top, I mean, excuse me, a double bottom sort of thing before it moves up. So I'm kind of convinced on that double bottom again. And I really want to take it back up to either that 19... 19 flat or i just definitely want to just take it to where it's higher highs and higher lows so until we really get the break of these highs over to the right here because this is just above the all-time high or excuse me the previous all-time high area and if we get a break of, then, of that, then that's definitely a, a go to possibly taking it back up to retest the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. So just for a recap, everything has been lining up. We're all in. We're looking for lower prices to ultimately take prices back up to the top. And that's pretty much my analysis for tonight. So for tonight, we're going to pretty much, that was just a recap for tonight. So we're going to go ahead and just move right on into Traders Talk. 
which is a section of the show we put in play to give you guys a real deal understanding of what this trading is all about. That we're not just trying to show you about all the gains and the profits, but we're also trying to show you some of the lo uh, the losses that we've taken and maybe give you the recap on why we took those losses so you guys won't have to take those losses in the future. So I guess I got a thing I definitely want you guys to kind of understand is correlation. Correlation is a very, very strong element in Forex because with the whole thing from the way we analyze the market from the top-down analysis, from moving averages, from previous highs to previous lows to anything in Forex, it's all about correlation. And if you're a person that can see correlation and understand that how things move either together or separately that is a very 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 cool key and just like my friend Mert, uh, Mert Todd Mert Supreme aka Mert Supreme when he came in and spoke about how when you can look at one market and really determine if that market is going down you know for sure this one is going up so that is another way traders use tools to move and make trades in the market. Another thing I really want you guys to do is to always remember that you guys are writing down your levels, previous levels that we talked about last week, and even levels before that. Because what you want to do, you're going to take that information and use it as a correlation to see where the market is going in its entirety. Because if we retested levels that we spoke about two weeks ago or three weeks ago and those prices come back down into those levels, you know exactly what to do. The last time you can't, you noticed and you wrote those prices down, you knew there was a correlation that when it came into that area, it either respected that level or it blew past that level. But either way, you have it written down so you can see it in your face. It's almost like you take it off of your brain and you put it in on your paper. And anything that you write literally comes real. So that's why I really begun to really write down levels. Not to say I weren't, I wasn't before. I was more of like, you know, writing it in my online notebook. That is something about writing it out to me works better. Everyone has their own little things or ways they do things. But for me, actually doing it the old-fashioned way, pulling out a pencil and piece of paper and writing those levels down or those levels that you like to trade. Like I said, for me, I like to stay closer to those quarter levels. They always work for me. I don't have to worry about 25657 or da-da-da-da. I can just stay closely with those whole numbers, 25, 50, and 75. So that's pretty much my little spiel, writing your things down, journaling, documentation, and correlation are the two things I want to leave with you guys for tonight. I know Tiberius got a couple of things that he wants to leave with you guys. Yep. So when we talk about correlation, I want to piggyback on that because what I find interesting is that you can have so many different concepts in the market, but somehow all of these things just somehow, some way tie all in back into each other. Because when we talk about correlation, if you guys remember our lesson from last week when we talked about hedging with options and with stocks and futures, we told you that in order to hedge something, you have to find an asset that has a very similar correlation. So either you take that same asset, so if you you need a hedge for gold, you short the gold futures if you're long and you own gold, right? So that's a direct correlation because it's the same thing. But if you can't find that thing, you can find the indirect thing, which comes back to correlation. The correlation tells you how strong the relationship is between two different assets. So correlation is based on the scale from zero to one. So the closer that number is to 1.00, the better it is. So let's say your correlation is 0.85. That's a fantastic correlation. Anything above, I think, uh, I think they say anything above 50 is significant. Anything above 70 is exceptional. Anything higher than that is just fantastic. So correlation is extremely important, not only for understanding which assets affect what, 
but also for when you want to hedge. Because let's say you wanted to hedge against gold and you went long on the dollar index when you was long gold. That would be a bad hedge because you misplayed the correlation. Because if you guys know from watching our show, we know that when gold increases, the strength of the dollar usually decreases. So those two things should be moving opposite. So when you understand that correlation, you know how to play it when you're trying to hedge your position. So I think correlation can be important in all aspects of trading, whether you're a day trader, a swing trader, or just a long-term investor. Being able to understand correlation and how it can help you in the market can be something extremely beneficial towards you. And I encourage everybody out there to dive a little bit more into correlation, research it, and see how it works for you. Come back and share it with us. And I hope you learned something from that tonight. All right. There you have it, guys. I really appreciate everyone who pulled up tonight. Love each and every one of you guys who do pull up and show love. You can always be pretty. We want everyone to follow us. Hit us on Instagram. Follow us on our new um, Bison Trading Show IG page. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Bison Trading Show. Uh, the Instagram is Bison Trading Show. You can hit me on my personal IG at I'm the D Guy or my business page at Pearl underscore financial underscore LLC. Drop a message, drop a comment, drop a question about anything you guys may have struggling or just want to pop in and say hi. I would love to interact with any one of my viewers. We love you guys that love to pull up and watch us because we love just giving the knowledge and dropping the knowledge every week moving forward. Um, you can definitely hit my boy Ty on his links at. You guys can make sure to follow me on both Instagram and YouTube under the name Ty Trade Future. Over on YouTube, I trade throughout the week, and I show you guys exactly how I like to chop it up when it comes to the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 Future. On Instagram, I give you a more detailed and written account. I give you pictures of my trades and everything. And so make sure you follow me on both of those platforms, YouTube and Instagram, under the name Ty Trades Future. And of course, Make sure you follow that Bison Trading Show page, man. New YouTube page up. I think we're up to about 30 videos by now. All of them yeah. are more than an hour long. So if you want to talk about a library full of information, it's right there for you if you want it. So with that being said, man, I think that pretty much wraps it up for us. It's been a great show so far. You know we appreciate you guys tuning in. Catch us here once again Thursday night. 9.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live and direct. And then once again, catch us the morning after for our live trading analysis show Friday morning where we put everything together that we learned throughout the week and show you how to really do this in the market. So if anybody watches the show, you pretty much know what our next line is. All so right. Please, go ahead and hit them with it. Go ahead, man. Ty, take us out of here gracefully, respectfully. Yes, yes. Good people, we appreciate you for pulling up, and that's a wrap for tonight. Good. <laughs>